I miss your camp, Baraka. What about it? Blood is everywhere. Blood is everywhere. That's an absolutely accurate description of the Tarkatan's war camp, and I will show you why in today's episode. Right off the bat, just when you get into the first tent that you can see in the background, there is a large bowl filled with blood, but what kind of blood is it you may ask? Well, the answer is quite simple. Just in front of the tent, there is a large bonfire and do you know what kind of flesh these dark cottons are cooking? Just look closely. It's human flesh guys, what you can see right here are actually human beings that were most likely hunted from Earthrealm because there are no humans in Outworld as we know except for Aaron Black and Kano I guess. I'm from Earthrealm like you, but my employer Koto Khan is from Outworld, so now I'm from Outworld. In any case, if you aren't 100% sure whether it's real human flesh or not, just look at this scene. These are undoubtedly human organs, you can actually see the hands, the legs, the ribcage, the intestines, and they are all ready to be cooked. So really, Baraka was not kidding around when he said that he has recipes for human flesh. You've got knife skills, but can you cook? I have recipes for human flesh. Around the bonfire, there is a bunch of Tarkatans that uh, look alike. But what I found interesting here are these two female Tarkatans sitting around, probably waiting for the human meat to be thoroughly cooked, who knows. But I gotta say, damn, they are pretty flat. I guess Melina should be thankful that Shang Tsung mixed her genetics with that of Kitana's to look that voluptuous, let's say. So pretty, so fair, so sad and alone. <gasps> Come, let us be a family. In the background of the stage, you can actually see many other tents, all of which are empty so there is nothing much to see here, except this one which has a Tarkatan cutting a piece of meat, and as soon as he's done, he simply disappears behind the curtains. In the background, there is nothing much to see other than this waterfall which actually looks pretty darn beautiful, but there is nothing interesting beyond that other than some random 2D textures, and if you look at the farther tents, they are not fully modeled like the ones that are near the players. From the Tarkatan's war camp we jump into another realm, and this time we are in a stage that was requested by you guys in the previous episode, and I am talking about Kronika's Hourglass. I have to say that this is the least interesting arena in the entire game, because the whole thing is nothing but a dark void. However, there are two interesting elements to see in the stage. The first of which is the hourglass itself, and according to the storyline, it determines the fate of everything that occurs in all the realms, and whoever has control over it, they get to determine what happens in the universe. So if you decide to do what Liu Kang did and choose to eternally ban Kitana in a timeless universe, you can do that. The other intriguing thing that you can see in this stage are these strings of gears or whatever these things are, but I must say they look pretty mesmerizing. Whoever thought that this would be a good idea to be added to this stage, I gotta salute that person because it really does give it that extra kick of mystery and eternity if you will. Other than that, there's pretty much nothing but empty darkness as I said, and hence I'm gonna end today's episode right here right now. Let me guys know which stage you'd like me to explore next. For more, make sure to like the video and subscribe to Gamelution.